I told you earlier that we would have a real life Ghostbuster on the show, and we do. Now, if you have a ghost in your house, you better listen to this because our next guest does this for a living. He spends his days and nights tracking down ghosts and poltergeists and is the author of a book called ESP, Hauntings and Poltergeist. He's a parapsychologist and uh, can help you get rid of unwanted spirits. Lloyd Auerbach. Hi, Lloyd. Hello. Now, I know that a lot of your work, uh, you'll go around debunking, uh, I guess, about 70% of the cases that you hear. We check very carefully into the cases because okay. people do mistake ordinary things. Okay. Why don't, why don't we first uh, back up and talk a little bit about the Amityville Horror, mm -hmm. uh, because that was one case that you discovered was a hoax. Yeah, actually, several people discovered that okay. was a hoax. Tell us a while back. It was a case, very famous case during the 70s. It was written up as a true story where a family had complained after moving into a house where a mass murder had been committed, that there were all sorts of things moving around their house. They were being chased out by demonic figures, uh, infestations of flies, green slime coming out of the walls, you name it, it appeared in the, the film when it showed up with a great special effects work. And that film uh, and that book was based on what they said was a true story and what the publisher put out as a true story, but in fact it was really a hoax that was drummed, uh, dreamed up by the Lutz family and the attorney for the DeFeo family, who that was the boy who killed his family. William Weber, who is the attorney for Ronald DeFeo, said that over bottles of wine, he and George Lutz and, his, and Lutz's wife dreamed up this whole wonderful setting because, you know, what better to have a haunted house than, of course, having a place where mass murder was committed. Sure, sure. And several of the investigators on that case, Jerry Salfin, who's on the faculty at John F. Kennedy University with myself, and as well as Carla Osis and Alex Tennis at the American Society for Psychical Research in New York had actually invested that case, uh, investigated that case, and Alex was kind of interesting. He's a psychic who did find one thing in the house. He found a movie contract. <laughs> well, so I guess that was the end of that then. Basically. Now, now you, you also um, uh, tried to photograph ghosts. But apparently they can't be photographed. Well, I mean, we take cameras into the cases we go yeah. in, and we really don't expect there to be anything on the film. Well, the pictures are really to, for reference sake. Okay. The problem with ghost photographs is the, is the idea that ghosts may not be reflecting light at all, that it is an image created in the mind of the viewer. It's a very subjective phenomenon. So what are people seeing, or what are people hearing when they say that there are ghosts or there are poltergeists in my People home? are seeing and hearing what they are seeing and hearing everyday mm -hmm. life. We are all seeing not with our eyes as much as we are with our minds. Perception resides in the brain. We get information through our senses, but then it's translated like a computer will translate an image. And what happens, what we think happens with ghosts is that there is a free-floating mind out there that puts an image into your mind as to why and, or rather how that ghost wants to be seen. It's kind of a, a self-image, and that's basically why ghosts have clothing. I mean, if you think about it, why would there be a ghost with a polyester suit on, but we see them? Mm -hmm. There's no so, so it's imagining is what you're saying. It's, it's not imagining. It has an actual cause, mm -hmm. an outside cause sometimes, and sometimes an internal cause. But what's the most sensational case you, you've worked on? I walked into a situation where we had a woman come to JFK who said she was being grabbed by the throat by a demonic entity, and she had the marks to prove it. She said that she was witnessed by several people. She's an ex-cop from Alaska. Mm -hmm. And I went out to her place. Marks, you mean? Just literally marks like hand marks on okay. her throat, okay. like that. Like she, she was claiming that she'd been lifted up by the throat and held against the wall okay. several occasions, choked by this demonic figure. And myself and a colleague went out to the, their apartment, and while I was there, she actually had an attack. There was, uh, she was looking down the hallway as if something was coming towards her. She fell on the ground. Her hands went near her throat, but not actually touching. Her throat bulged out, and these marks started appearing. Now, I've seen all the movies, so the first thing I did was yell for the ghost to leave her alone, and, of course, it stopped right away. Hmm. We did a little digging, and it turned out that... But you saw the marks. You we saw, saw the marks mark. coming up. That's right. We did a lot of digging in this case. We found out that she was actually seeing a therapist for a traumatic experience that had happened as a child with her father. And after talking to the therapist and digging into this, it turned out that the demonic figure was a representation of her father, and she was causing this to herself. You can hypnotize people and cause physical things to happen to them. Well, now, I've heard about that. It's similar to saying that I'm going to put water on your arm. Right. And when the water touches it, it will cause a burn mark. Right. Now, it could be ice-cold water, but That's it will right. still cause a burn mark? It seems to cause a burn mark. So we have an incredible power over our own body. Psychosomatic illnesses are caused by the mind's effect on the body, stress of the body. Okay. What is a poltergeist? Is there a difference between a poltergeist and a... Um, basic a, ghost? And your basic ghost, yeah, your, your garden variety ghost. <laughs> <laughs> Ghosts are people too, but they're dead. Uh -huh. uh, 
Poltergeists <laughs> are, are related to really living people. There are situations going on where objects move around in the house, kind of like the beginning of the film Poltergeist, but no beasts from other dimensions in that. Okay. We have situations typically in these cases where someone in, in a family setting or, or the whole family perhaps is undergoing some, quarter, some kind of stress or there's some sort of family dynamic that's going on that's causing a lot of frustration and tension. And one person or sometimes the entire family seems to be releasing that stress or attacking other items of other possessions of people by moving them around psychically. Using and they don't know they're doing it, I guess. Is that they right? don't know they're doing it. Usually when they figure out that they're doing it or we can really pin down as to who's doing it, it stops. And, and there's one uh, I was reading about where uh, it, there was a uh, rain coming down in one of the rooms. Mm -hmm. Case I actually investigated with, oh, okay. with a colleague of mine, a man named uh, Christopher Chacon, who's a magician actually, who's uh, a very good illusionist. Chris and I went into this uh, setting where the family actually had called us in after the fact. This was after a few weeks of literal, literally thunder bursts or water bursts right below the ceiling. The father had done a lot of investigating and figured out that his son was causing it because his son was the common denominator. They checked everything in the house. They checked the insulation, they checked the pipes, they brought in somebody from Pacific Gas and Electric who also witnessed apparently the events. I talked to several witnesses in the case and it turned out that the boy was having a problem with his family. And his problem was that he had been doing some martial arts, and when it came to actually doing the sparring, the, com the competing, he didn't want to do that, so he quit. Without telling his parents that the reason he quit was because of the competition. And they wanted him to have something else to do, so he liked to swim. Join the swim team. And they were putting a lot of pressure on him to join the swim team. Well, David didn't want to join the swim team because he didn't want to compete. And David was creating a little bit of a tense situation for himself, and it was coming out in these bursts of water. So you believe that it was really happening? It there were plenty of witnesses and certainly a lot of damage, and the insurance company paid off on it, so really? something was going on. Now, there are also uh, cases of plates flying off of a, uh, a shelf, mm -hmm. and that is not being caused by ghosts at all. It's the same telekinetic uh, response that somebody is doing because of stress? Is that what you're saying? That... Generally because of stress. There's hmm. some reason. We actually look at why these objects might be moving or what they represent. For example, the water. What did that rep represent in that case? If there's a situation where objects are moving around, whose objects are moving around, what's being broken, who might be the cause of this, and we kind of track back like a detective would mm -hmm. to figure out what the, the actual psychological cause might be. So if I have a ghost in my house, or mm -hmm. if, I, if I have things going on, there's some haunting going on, what do I do? Well, if you actually have a ghost that is trying to communicate, or actually you can actually see, and several other people might be seeing, what you should do is talk to him or her. Okay, we're dealing with... What, I know what it's if a I have nothing to say? <laughs> Well, the ghost is there to say something to you, so you just simply <laughs> okay. ask, why are you here? Okay. Really? And very often people get answers. Uh, there was one report to me, a woman said that she'd had the ghost of her son sh uh, just showing up to her constantly for six months. She finally turned around on the safe sober priest. She's turned around and asked him, why are you here? And he said, well, there's an insurance policy. He had died in an accident. She found that there was an insurance policy nobody knew about. He, she dug for it. She was worth lots of money after that oh, case. Oh, boy. Well, there's, there's lot, uh, a lot more to be uh, talked about in this book. I wish we could get to more of it. Uh, ESP Hauntings and Poltergeist. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ross. All right. Lloyd Auerbach, Ghostbuster. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Stay with us.